Wahoo! I'm so excited for this week's video because I'm sharing with you two of my favorite itineraries adventuring just outside Waikiki and if you're new here, aloha! I'm Christine with Where in the World is Yale and I make travel videos every week to help you get up, get out, and go travel. So if you like to travel, consider subscribing. I try so hard on this channel to make the video I wish I got to see before I traveled to a place. And specifically, there are two things I love about today's video. One, I love itineraries that are conveniently located right next to each other. Easy logistics. And also, I love to know the prices so I know what I'm getting into. So let's dive in. This first itinerary is a 20 to 25 minute drive from Waikiki headed toward the east side. And we're going for priceless views. And really the only cost in this itinerary is the food. So depending on how much you eat and drink, that will determine how expensive this itinerary is. But I love to work out, then chill, then drink, or work out, drink, then chill, or any combination of those works for me. But let's start with two options for a really awesome workout. The first one, the Coco Crater hike. So, so steep, but so, so beautiful. I really love this hike, but if you want to go and bring a coffee and keep it easy, then I recommend just strolling along the paved path of the Makapu'u Lighthouse Trail. Two really great options, and for both of these, I have a full Oahu hiking video and link in the description below, so make sure you check that out. One other option is the Makapu'u Tide Pools. A lot of people recommended it. On the day that I went, it was so windy, so I didn't really want to hike down, but that's another option. If you can time it with low tide, go check out the Tide Pools. Afterwards, take a short drive over to the China Walls. Park your car in the neighborhood and then walk in. Bring with you a chair or something to sit on, maybe some drinks, and sunscreen, definitely bring sunscreen. But go watch the beautiful waves and the surfers as well. And also watch the tourists who try to take pictures of themselves getting wet by the waves, but also be careful because the waves can be very big and could potentially suck you out. So just make sure you're being careful, but it's such a phenomenal place for amazing views. Worth mentioning in the area, I, I thought it was really fun to park your car and just go look at the blowhole. It's pretty. I mean, when the water hits it just right, you'll see a beautiful rainbow. That was a good one to see for just a few minutes. Really, really Also in the area, the famous Hanama Bay. So beautiful there. If you do choose to go, there is an admission fee. And if I could go back, there are two things that I wanted to do that I didn't get a chance to do. The first is the distillery. I could see that one being fun. And the second is the Coco Crater Botanical Garden. It looked really beautiful. So those are two to consider for your trip. Let's grab something to eat. I loved eating at Lico's. Oh my gosh, such an amazing spot to grab some brunch. My plate cost me $15. And if you grab a drink altogether, $25 for that meal. And if you choose to head back towards Waikiki, Mud Hen Water cannot be missed. I loved eating all of their little small plates. And I had three or four small plates with two glasses of wine and that put me at $50 for that tab. And if you have any tips of your own, add them in the comments below so that we can help each other to build awesome itineraries. And if you're having some fun with me, cheers that like button if you haven't already and consider subscribing. And let's talk about the next one, which is a 30 to 40 minute drive north of Waikiki heading towards Haia State Park to go kayaking. The amazing thing about this kayak trip is you head out to a sandbar that on average, depending on the weather and depending on the currents and the wind, generally takes people around 45 minutes to do this kayak out one way to the sandbar. I think I had the current working with me or maybe I was just in beast mode that day, but it took me 18 minutes to get out to the sandbar. But there's one thing you have to know. Make sure you time going there with low tide. When I went, <laughs> it's beautiful out here, but my tip for you, make sure you look at the tide calendar and come here when it's low tide so you can actually come out on the sandbar. If you're thinking, what sandbar? This down here is a sandbar and it's huge. It's just that I'm here during high tide. So if I were to get out, I'd probably be up to my thighs in water. So come during low tide so you can enjoy the sandbar. And here 
here's what you need to know about renting a kayak. I rented with Kama Aina Kayak, which is right in the Haia State Park, and it normally costs $59 for a half day or four hour kayak rental. But a pro tip, check Groupon. I actually looked at Groupon and they were on there. And instead of buying it, I just showed them on the app and asked them to price match it on the spot, which they did. And they also do things like they rent coolers and wet bags and snorkel gear, etc. in case you want to bring some drinks or jump in the water. But the four hour kayak rental plus a $5 wet bag in total cost me $43 for the half day, which I was totally stoked about. So if I could do it over again, I would time it correctly with low tide. I would probably get the kayak for the full day, the eight hour day, and I would bring a cooler and go hang out on the sandbar. There's one more thing you should know. A 45 minute kayak is pretty far. So here's another tip. Whew, the weather's really coming in. I'm glad to be getting out of here now. <laughs> Make sure you come on a clear day. So I was pretty lucky in not getting caught in some potentially really bad weather. And speaking of weather, here's something to know. There's another kayak adventure in that area that looks so much fun. It's to the Twin Islands and it's another really, really awesome one that so many people recommend. But one thing to consider is depending on how the weather is, choose your kayak adventure carefully. In other words, the kayak to the sandbar is, isn't as difficult in terms of like waves and currents, etc., versus the kayak out to the Twin Islands can get some pretty big waves, etc. So if the weather on the day that you're going is kind of intense, consider doing the sandbar like I did. But if you have a perfectly clear day, and if I had a perfectly clear day, I would have gone out to the Twin Islands. So I'm praying for good weather for you. And if you do get good weather and you are able to kayak out to those twin islands, then you should definitely do the really short and really beautiful hike to the Lanakai pillboxes. Again, check out my Oahu hiking video for more info on that one, but whoo, stunning, stunning views. And in that area, you should eat at Cinnamons afterwards. Oh, such a great place for breakfast and eating things like guava pancakes that won't make you feel well afterwards, but are so worth it in the moment. All right, to recap, I've shared with you two of my favorite itineraries on the east side and north of Waikiki by just a 30 minute drive out. But the question is, how much did you pay for your car rental? I share more info about that in my Waikiki video, but the headline here is that for my car rental, I paid $38 per day with taxes and all that info, et cetera, via Hertz. And if I have one tip for you in looking for a car rental, consider getting your car rental not at the airport. You'll save significantly more money in that way. Ooh, I love Oahu. If you had some fun with me in this video, cheers that like button. If you haven't already, add your tips below and consider signing up for my email newsletter. I never send spam, although I love spam masubi. Always helpful tips. I'm here every week with new videos and I'll see you in the next adventure. Ciao.